Sanat here, and welcome back to Marvel Legends Rundown. This is the 2019 edition of the series. For those that may have missed the previous rundowns on this channel, this is taking a look at every figure released in 2019. That does not include the Fantastic Four and Demo Goblin Ways, because those are 2020 releases that happened to slip out into 2019, but were not scheduled for 2020. Everything else, though, is fair game. We're taking a look at all the Build-A-Figure Ways, followed by all of the other retail releases, followed by store exclusives and convention exclusives. We're talking about everything, what I got, what I didn't get. There's 141 Marvel Legends released this year, making it the largest line of action figures, I think, of 2019 and of a very long time. I believe the most amount of figures released in a single year for Marvel Legends. Hasbro's pumping these things out. So without further ado, let's begin. First wave of the year was the Build-A-Figure for M'Baku. Uh, this was based on the Black Panther film from 2018. I really loved the movie, but I was starting to phase out buying MCU figures this year, and I ended up just picking up nothing from the wave. Uh, the wave contained two variants of Black Panther, T'Chaka, his father, uh, also a Dora Milaje, which I almost picked up a couple times, but just didn't quite do it. Uh, and then we had Killmonger in his tactical gear and Ulysses Claw. Starting out the Captain Marvel wave is Captain Marvel herself, featured in the colors after Monica Rambeau changed her costume. This is absolutely a fantastic figure, includes alternate heads for masked and unmasked, alternate hand options, doesn't have a Build-A-Figure piece, but a great figure on her own, 5 out of 5. Captain Marvel in her bomber jacket was seen as many as a redundant figure, and I have to agree, there really is no reason to get this figure besides Goose and the Build-A-Figure piece, therefore she gets a 2 out of 5. Scroll Commander Talos is actually one of the first scrolls released by Hasbro in Marvel Legends, and it's nice to finally see them getting out there, especially in the MCU. And Talos is a great figure, though some inaccuracy issues and some weird reuse lead him in the 3 out of 5 category. Young Nick Fury is a pretty stellar release, and using a new suit body, this honestly is a great figure with a great likeness to Samuel L. Jackson, and I think it's really cool. Uh, the goose included isn't totally accurate to the film, but it is a nice inclusion overall. 4 out of 5. Jan Rog has very little likeness to the character from the movie. This is obviously not concept art, doesn't have an unmasked Jude Law head, and doesn't feature that many accessories. Plus, he has giant feet. Overall, a 3 out of 5. The Janice Vell Captain Marvel was a surprise in the line, and our first comic figure of the Captain Marvel wave. Absolutely fantastic. I love the star pattern, love the partial transparent plastic. I love the accuracy to the comic. It's a 4 out of 5. For some reason, an Iron Man villain slipped into this wave in the form of Grey Gargoyle. Not complaining, it's a great looking figure based on the character. Now, the character design itself is left up to interpretation, but overall, it's a 4 out of 5. My motivation for picking up the whole wave was the crease entry. This is a fantastic figure. Great articulation, great sculpt, very nice accuracy to the Jack Kirby design. Overall, I can't say anything bad about it. 5 out of 5. Starting the Spider-Man wave, we have the all-new, all-different Black Cat. This figure isn't fantastic. Uh, we've been looking for a new Black Cat for a while, but this isn't it. Uh, inaccuracies such as the whip belt not being able to be removed and overall the costume design not being that great means it's a 3 out of 5. Silver Sable is a character I've wanted for a very long time in this line. I'm glad to finally see her delivered. Great likeness to the character, overall great figure, some weird issues with the body she reused, but definitely a 4 out of 5. Red Goblin is a character I never asked for in Marvel Legends, but having the figure in handy is pretty good. That nice little blend of Goblin energy with Carnage energy looks pretty fantastic, though the lack of a glider does knock him down a peg, so he's only a 4 out of 5. Pairing to Red Goblin like cheese to wine is the symbiote Spider-Man. Great looking figure, uh, great representation of the comic, but the mold he's using is starting to show its age to the point where some joints only want to hold in certain positions, and that's an issue, so he's going to be a 4 out of 5. While not initially excited for this figure, Night Thrasher is my favorite of the wave. He's absolutely a 5 out of 5. Great sculpt, great articulation, great accuracy, and great accessories. There is nothing I can say bad about this figure. Puma is one of those other characters that has been around, but no one really asked for Mortal Legend, yet here we are. Honestly, not a bad figure, though just kind of limited in a lot of things, and the elbows look a bit weird with the giant gaps, so he's a 3 out of 5. Six Arm Spidey's gotten a lot of talk. I'm not going to say much besides, I didn't really want it, but that's it. That's all I got. Coming from a very mediocre wave, we have the Kingpin, one of the most requested Marvel Legends characters of all time, and he's perfect. Like, there's literally nothing wrong with this figure, and there's nothing I can critique about it. The only thing I could say is, I wish the wave you had to get to build him was a lot stronger. But Kingpin himself is a 5 out of 5. Now, while I go nuts for Fantastic Four and X-Men figures, I'm very picky with my Avengers. That being said, this Hercules is amazing. I'm so impressed. 
It's based on the modern design, not the classic, but that's not a detriment personally to me. I think every little detail they put in to the chest hair, to the beard, just to the way the figure looks overall, the alternate weapon options, this is just a great, great Hercules, and he's absolutely a five out of five. It may have taken a while, but we're almost done with the Black Order. Now we have Ebony Ma. Ebony Ma looks fantastic. Uh, he's very accurate to the movie, not quite perfect, but is the best representation of the character I think we're ever going to get. And honestly, I'm pretty impressed. Five out of five. So the rest of this wave built Armored Thanos from Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. Not a figure I was really that interested in. The other figures released were Citizen V, Nighthawk, and Living Laser. Comic characters I just didn't care about. Uh, then there was a Quantum Suit uh, version of Captain America. Wasn't interested. And Ronin from the MCU, which wasn't interested. He didn't have enough screen time. Gambit is the first X-Men on this list. And honestly, I really like this figure a lot. Uh, the head is controversial for some, but for me, I don't have a problem with it. I love the card effects, both this one and the throwing one he comes with. Absolutely fantastic figure, 5 out of 5. Blink was a surprise of the wave, and honestly, a really good one. I do really like the figure overall. The only issue is really is the body mold she's been using is starting to get a little outdated. That being said, her teleportation ring effect is awesome, 4 out of 5. The Reavers are pretty unexpected to be in Marvel Legends, and the Skullbuster here seemed like a great little convenient reuse of Deathlock. That being said, he actually turned into a figure I really like. It's really strange, but yeah, I gotta give this guy a 5 out of 5, because it's really comic accuracy, great articulation, and alternate head that can make another character. Just awesome. After a disastrous release of the previous Jubilee, Jubilee finally returns to the line, now in her classic 90s yellow coat, and she looks fantastic. Great articulation, great sculpt. I would have liked to seen some effect pieces outside of just the alternate head with the bubble gum, but absolutely 4 out of 5. Forge finally joins the line, working its way towards the gold team as well as some classic 80s X-Men. Great looking figure. Overall, I give him a 4 out of 5 only because the Bucky Cap mold is starting to get a little old, and he's got slighty uh, overlay bits like his tassels. Weapon X in his classic look, honestly a surprise figure, mostly because he's a mostly naked man. That being said, great figure, great representation of the comics. The only issue I really have is that the screaming face is put in the unmasked head, while the helmeted head has no screaming face option. But other than that, 4 out of 5. Beast is amazing. Great articulation, great sculpt. I don't mind the head. Some people do, and there's definitely options out there for those that don't like it. I'm impressed. 5 out of 5. When I think Caliban, I think of a skinny little mutant that can track other mutants. Not this unstoppable war monster. That being said, after doing some research, finding out that this was after Caliban got powers induced by Apocalypse, I was like, okay, I'm on board, and this is a great figure. Outside of some pearlized plastic issues that come up with some copies of the figure, definitely a build-a-figure worth building. Five out of five. There's been a lack of Thor characters in this line, and it's finally nice to see Beta Ray Bill join it. In his modern design, which means he has a little bit blander than his classic, but that being said, excellent representation of that version of the character. Five out of five, especially love the articulated jaw. Next up is MCU Shuri, a hotly anticipated figure, and what is up with the eyes? What are those? Honestly, it's just the figure sculpted nicely and the articulation is good, but those eyes! I've seen every figure look like this, she's just like staring into your soul! 3 out of 5. We finally have a classic comic Loki in the line, and he's alright. Uh, I'll give him a 3. Uh, I do like the look overall, but uh, it kind of would have been cool, I think, maybe to go more modern and give him a neat old cape, but uh, it's a nice classic Loki. Union Jack? is pretty sweet. Uh, he's using the Bucky Cap mold just to have the better chest design, I think. And, but the fact he comes with a removable knife, removable gun with both working holsters, nice articulation, great look to the character. Four out of five. I really like this one. Here's Rock Python. He's a one out of five. I didn't even feel like taking him out of the package. MCU Rescue is a pretty great figure. I actually really like this one. I, I've gotten tired of Iron Man variants overall, but I did want to get Pepper in her armor and Fantastic figure. I, I really do like her. Um, overall, 4 out of 5. The thing I would have included was an unmasked head. There was a War Machine based on concept art. I didn't pick it up. Here we have the MCU Endgame Hulk slash 2012 Hulk slash not a great Hulk. Uh, when looking in pictures, I thought this guy looked pretty good, but then uh, noticing that in hand, he's kind of thin. And I just want to show that like this is supposed to be a Hulk, but he, he feels incredibly too lean, uh, even for MCU Hulk. So... I mean, he's got nice details, the face is a little weird, the other face isn't much better, um, but yeah, I, I gotta give him like a three, just cause it's like, I'm glad to have him. Not that problem, but he ain't fantastic. 
Moving on to the next Spider-Man wave, we have the MCU Upgrade Suit, a very great costume. I really love the look of this. However, the figure itself is only a 3 out of 5, and that is because of one simple fact. You see all these nicely painted black lines? That was all done by me. They didn't paint the lines in, they just molded them, which gave this figure a really stark color contrast and did not look that great. Conversely, the Stealth Suit Spider-Man from Spider-Man Far From Home, absolutely fantastic. Really no other major issues. I think there's some articulation limitations I wish weren't there, but other than that, four out of five. One of my favorite MCU characters is Mysterio. I absolutely love the interpretation of him, and this is a fantastic figure. It's only a four out of five for one reason. No unmasked head, no Jake Gyllenhaal head, and there's not even a re-release of this guy to fix that. Really a bummer. There have been many Spider-Women in the line, but one I've wanted above all of them is Julia Carpenter, and she's finally here, and absolutely fantastic. Great body mold usage, great paint work, great face, great uh, accessories, five out of five. Doppelganger was a great reuse of the six-armed Spidey mold. However, I do wish that he had an ab crunch, only because Doppelganger gets in a lot of crunch down crawly poses. That being said, the only other thing I think I would have included, maybe some web effects or some alternate hands, but four out of five. Hydro Man was an unexpected choice, however, a very welcome one. A very good representation of Morris Bench, and honestly, I think the only real issue is that his elbows can't even go 90 degrees. They can only go about like 25 degrees. Other than that, great figure, four out of five. Another classic Spider-Man villain finally enters the line with Scorpion. Great looking figure. Some people have issues with the face and the not painted face versus painted face, but it's accurate enough, so I can give this figure a five out of five. The bendy tail is a big plus. Molten Man, based on his MCU appearance from Spider-Man Far From Home, is an impressive beast. The only real problem I have is that the figure can't pose, and that has all the articulation, and just one pose is going to keep him stable. Other than that, nice little three out of five. Guardian, leader of Alpha Flight, overall decent figure. Would have liked to have seen some effect parts, though, so he gets a three out of five. Rounding out that 90s X-Force nicely is Boom Boom. Great figure, our second figure to have a bubblegum head, and honestly, not many problems besides just the body mold, so four out of five. Let's not dodge around the cannonball too much. Yes, he's only the top half of a figure. No, he does not include normal legs. Yes, the effect piece is cool. No, was it worth the $20? Uh, I give him a two out of five because, hey, I honestly would have never displayed him in anything but this explosion effect, but it still feels like you're paying for half a figure. After so many great characters have been made, this was one of my most requested, hands down, Nightcrawler. I'm not even gonna dodge around it. He's a five out of five. Three alternate expressions with different looks to them. Sword, uh, alternate hands, great articulation. There's, there's nothing bad about it. Literally nothing bad about this figure. By the way, if anyone's asking, this is my favorite Marvel Legend of the Year. Not to spoil the top 10 list at the end or anything, but I've literally been asking for Mr. Sinister since they started X-Men, and I really wanted the modern design, and everyone just kept saying, oh, the Toy Biz one's fine, we don't need a new Sinister, and then Hasbro's like, no, we do, and it just made this. This is incredible. Five out of five? Rounding out the wave is the prerequisite Wolverine, and that is the X-Force Wolverine. A uh, nice variant that we've gotten in the past, but now in the new body. And I like the new claws. Uh, I do like these thicker, less bendy claws. Four out of five. Man-Thing, and then Sasquatch, and now Wendigo. These three characters always seem to share molds, and honestly, this Wendigo is pretty awesome. While he is the King Wendigo, not necessarily super classic, I really like him. I like the size, love the tail look, I love the head. Five out of five. As one of my most favorite MCU characters, Valkyrie here is one of my most demanded figures of the year. Uh, this is something I wanted to get since Ragnarok was the white armor, and she looks great. The only problems I have are the sword. The sword is bendy and floppy, just like the previous one. It's the same mold and the same material, and it's undersized, and I wish it was better. So she still gets a 4 out of 5, but that sword does knock down a few pegs. Rounding out the wave was Heimdall in his Infinity War slash Ragnarok look. We had a 2012 Avengers Captain America, a... Iron Man Mark 85, which didn't include the stuff that he probably should have, uh, the Vision that's clear, as well as War Machine in the Iron Patriot colors in a more accurate design. I just didn't really care. I'm kind of phasing out MCU figures in my collection, and this just didn't motivate me. And the Build-A-Figure was the um, Bro Thor, the Big Lebowski kind of look, which is cool, but again, just did not really feel like picking up the rest of the wave, I think. I think MCU figures are kind of phasing out of my collecting habit. Kicking off our X-Men Vintage Wave is Madripoor Wolverine. This is a variant a lot of people did ask for. While I'm not a fan of the head, it is really nice overall. Great details, great accessories, four out of five. 
as the first all new figure in a vintage style wave, the Silver Samurai is excellent. Bringing in a sharp level of detail and articulation, he's a 5 out of 5. Outback Dazzler was a surprise, not only existing so close after the last Dazzler, but being really good. Based on a fusion of her 80s look as well as her arcade game look, this figure turned out very nice, 5 out of 5. Sporting the coolest Cyclops accessories of all time is X-Factor Cyclops. He's the only member of his team that we have, but he is really solid. And being the Bucky Cat mold but not feeling loose is pretty amazing. I give him a 4 out of 5 only because his arms still cannot reach his visor very well. Three years after the previous one, we finally have a new Iceman. This one's more classic. He can fit with the 90s, he can fit with the 80s, he can fit with Amazing Friends. But overall, he's a great figure. The only issue is that he doesn't have any open hands. I don't know why this mold keeps getting stuck with just fists, but it looks really weird on Iceman. Otherwise, his effect is nice. So 4 out of 5. Rounding out the X-Men Vintage Wave is Storm, the most hotly anticipated figure of the whole wave. This is the Storm people have been asking for. Now, which color should it be in? Should it be white? Should it be silver? Should it be black? That's a debate for another day. However, Hasbro's already made a white hand. There's a black version coming up. So, <laughs> give me that silver, Hasbro. Anyways, great figure. Five out of five, no matter which color scheme you get it in. Last year's Ultimate Riders were three people with bikes. Our first one this year is Professor X with his hover chair. A great classic 90s look with the hover chair. I love the floating base. All kinds of intricate little details. Great figure itself as a good Charles Xavier. Uh, five out of five, there's really no doubt here. Now, how many Deadpools do you have that ride scooters? Yes, there's a lot of Deadpools in this line, but this one is special. Deadpool, including Dogpool and Squirrelpool. Lady Deadpool not included, but she didn't want to get off the bike. Uh, this is a crazy set. It's weird, it's wacky, it's definitely for Deadpool fans. And I like it, I like it a lot. Uh, overall, I give the set a four out of five just because the Deadpool is a lot of reuse, but it's still, it's a decent package and it makes some wacky displays. The other Ultimate Rider this year was Captain America in a World War II outfit with his bike. Uh, something I thought about getting, but just didn't pick up. Kicking off the Marvel 80th Anniversary subline is the Colossus and Juggernaut 2-pack based on Uncanny X-Men issue 102. This classic face-off is replicated in this 2-pack very well. Juggernaut is an upgrade of the Build-A-Figure released several years ago, having a more classic look, and Colossus is using some parts from his previous modern release, but added quite a few little new bits and pieces. Overall, a fantastic set of two great upgrade characters, absolutely a 5 out of 5. Well, based on the artwork of Alex Ross, this is a very classic styled Iron Man. This is the look I've been wanting in an Iron Man Marvel Legend for many years. There is no doubt I'm giving it a 5 out of 5. And the only real complaint I could say is that it is a $25 price point as opposed to the $20, but seeing the metallic paints, all the new sculpted parts and everything, it makes the whole package worth it. Also based on the Alex Ross artwork is Thor. Classic Thor, it's what I've been wanting for years. I, again, just this is what I've wanted. 5 out of 5. I love the inscription on the hammer. Just absolutely great figure. Marvel 80th includes several MCU uh, two-packs as well. This one being Hela and Scourge based on Thor Ragnarok. Hela is a fantastic upgrade giving a movie accurate costume with three very very good Kate Blanchett head sculpts. The only issue is she doesn't have a sword but she comes with a broken Thor hammer. It's literally five out of five on her. Scourge is pretty good. Uh, overall some articulation limitations bring him down to a four out of five but he looks good, he looks fantastic. This is a great two-pack. Grandmaster and Korg, two popular characters from Thor Ragnarok finally here. Grandmaster is a decent figure with a great head sculpt, but has a lot of limitations and his rope feels kind of like gold plastic syndrome. Not great, three out of five. Korg, limited articulation surprisingly on a big old guy like this, and honestly some non-movie accurate details and a lack of a meek, also three out of five. It's a decent two-pack, but I don't really see where the $50 came in. Marvel 80th also gave us an Ant-Man and Wasp 2 pack featuring Luis and Ghost. Now Luis is a character I did want as a Marvel Legend for a long time, but this figure has a lot of problems. He's got an incredibly high waist, his feet are kind of big, and his joints fit in a position to the point where he's kind of always leaning forward in order to be balanced. There's cool accessories like a giant ant and this really cool lab piece, but overall the figure itself is a 3 out of 5. I can't get him to stand in most poses. And Ghost has got similar issues. She's got very limited articulation, but also it's there's joints, but they only want to hold in certain positions, and those positions aren't strong enough. So again, three out of five. This disappointed me because this is a set I was really looking forward to, but it's just one of those things that I think this is my breaking point with MCU Marvel Legends. They just have a lot of issues that seem to not get addressed because they're MCU and they're going to sell anyways. 
Amazon had an exclusive Children of Magneto 3-pack featuring the classic Magneto that I was sure was coming after we got the previous one, a new Quicksilver, which we definitely needed, though his head is way too big, and a new Scarlet Witch that I think is absolutely fantastic and much better than the previous one. So overall, I'd give the set about a 4, uh, but individual figure-wise, Scarlet Witch go 5, Magneto 4, and Quicksilver a 3. Amazon exclusive Captain America, the first Avenger 2-pack featuring World War II Captain America and Peggy Carter. Good looking set, though the figures weren't as good as I wanted them to be, and so I never picked them up. Originally planned as a Toys R Us exclusive shared at San Diego Comic Con, is now an Amazon exclusive Alpha Flight 6-pack. When we got Guardian, I thought, alright cool, we're getting like one Alpha Flight member a year at this point. Uh, it'll take a few years to do it, but then Hasbro said, what if we just give you the rest of the base team all together? So Snowbird, Vindicator, uh, Aurora, North Star, Puck, who is now different than the Build-A-Figure, and Shaman. Great set. There is some reuse, but honestly, they look great. It's a team, it's a pack that most people just want the whole set of anyways, so I think it's absolutely one of the best multi-packs ever released by Hasbro. Five out of five. Next up is the Fan Channel Secret Empire 2-pack featuring Arnim Zola and Hydra Supreme. I didn't get Hydra Supreme, I did not care. I was able to get Arnim Zola at my comic shop uh, separate. I'm gonna give him like a five out of five. I really love the look of the figure. While he's not the classic look, that more armored look with that really cool face design really sells it. Based on Incredible Hulk issue 181 is Hulk versus Wolverine. Pairing this with the Wendigo Build-A-Figure, they really planned this out. Uh, this is a great two-pack. We finally got a comic Hulk that I can say, yes, that is the Incredible Hulk, and I absolutely love it. Uh, absolutely five out of five for me. This is the Hulk I wanted. This Wolverine is not one I mind having. It's his first appearance, and it's perfectly accurate to that version of the costume, so four out of five. It's just not the best looking costume. The black shirt Logan is a great figure. He's finally got the cowboy hat that I've been looking for on a Logan figure. Great figure. I'm gonna give him a five out of five. More people would rank him lower, but this is just the Logan I was looking for. Fan channel exclusive big time Spider-Man. New and improved, but still not interesting to me. Fan channel exclusive Agent Anti-Venom. Definitely should have just been an Agent Venom re-release instead of Agent Anti-Venom because most people didn't care about Agent Anti-Venom and I didn't care about picking this one up. Fan channel exclusive Deadpool and Hitmonkey 2-pack. Didn't have any interest in this one either. Fan channel exclusive Modern Punisher. Had no interest. Fan channel exclusive version 2 MCU Giant Man. Already had the first one, I'm good. Fan channel exclusive X-Force Deathlock. Just, I, I didn't really feel like buying this one. Fan channel exclusive Stealth Armor Iron Man, also just wasn't interested. Another fan channel exclusive, The Punisher in his War Machine armor. When I said I wanted a comic War Machine, this was not what I meant. European Convention slash fan channel Grey Hulk, absolutely fantastic figure, 5 out of 5. It's the Hulk, but in grey with a new head. Love the look of this, so happy to get it, hope we get a Red Hulk in the future. European Convention slash fan channel exclusive vintage carded Deadpool is the first appearance look and I actually really love this figure. I didn't get the original version of this during the Sasquatch wave, but these new colors and coming with all these guns and weapons just made this whole thing worth it. 5 out of 5. One of the most perfect two packs Hasbro's ever made. Literally, no one would want one without the other when it's the 90's power couple of Havoc and Polaris in their X-Factor uniforms. Same team, same colors, same matching personalities. This is a great two pack. Five out of five on both of these. The Love Triangle three pack also includes like three heads for every figure. It's awesome. Wolverine comes with three heads and bone claws. It was mostly the Apocalypse Wave figure. I'm gonna give him a three out of five for the least new stuff here. Bomber Jacket Cyclops comes with three heads as well as two fists for the first time on a Cyclops figure and looks just fantastic, four out of five. And the brand new Jim Lee style Jean Grey comes with two heads with long hair as well as ponytail. Looking great, five out of five. Totally makes the whole set worth it just for her. Star Force Captain Marvel is a Target exclusive, but also featured parts to make her into Minerva, which is what I did here. New characters over variants any day. And Minerva slash Star Force Captain Marvel, very solid figure, five out of five. Another Target two pack was the Spider-Man Homecoming uh, MJ and Spider-Man 2-pack. Wasn't interested in this one too much. I didn't think the MJ figure looked that great. Uh, cool they made her, but that was pretty much it. The next Target exclusive I didn't pick up was a 2-pack of Black Widow and Hawkeye in their Quantum Realm suits. And they actually include heads for Nebula, Iron Man, and Ant-Man, and you can swap other heads onto the bodies, which is actually a really smart idea. The Kraven's Last Hunt Spider-Man 2-pack at Target is fantastic. This is the set I wasn't initially that jazzed about because I already had Kraven, already had Symbiote Spider-Man. But after seeing pictures and realizing that Kraven was done really, really well, having a lot of extra detail and new expressions, and then also that the symbiote Spider-Man was not a symbiote Spider-Man, but a black costume Spider-Man by him having flipping hands as well as some changed details for when Spider-Man used to use a black costume to scare 
uh, different villains. This is a cool, cool set. Five out of five. Target exclusive, Iron Man Mark 15, Iron Spider 2 pack. The Mark 50 now has proper paint and a ton of accessories. Iron Spider now has an unmasked head as well as legs. Cool set, but Target wouldn't let me get it because there was a street date, even though they were out on the shelf, and then I never saw them again when I went back on the street date, so hooray! Mystique, starting at Walgreens, which is Walgreens exclusive. Very hard figure to find. I found her once at a Walgreens I hardly ever go to, and I'm really glad I did, because she's absolutely fantastic. A five out of five. Infamous Iron Man was a lot easier to find than Mystique, though still difficult in some areas. This, of course, was the time that Victor Von Doom decided to be a hero, and the world wouldn't let him. So, honestly, Infamous Iron Man, great figure, great likeness to the character in the comics, 5 out of 5. Black Suit Emma Frost is from the Marvel Now run, and she looks great. She was a Walgreens exclusive, but I think most people were able to find her for the most part. Um, my only issue is the heels kind of limit her, her balance, uh, which is a big issue. Other than that, I like this look, and I hope we do see the white suit someday. 4 out of 5. Walgreens exclusive, Marvel Legends Danny Moonstar with parts to make Wolf Spain and Karma. This was a nightmare, because these are three distinctive characters that are all put into the same packaging, and Walgreens decided to put, like, maybe one at a store. It took me months to track down three, and I always feel bad about having to buy duplicate figures, because that means there's less for other people. And there was no real other choice. How else was I going to get Wolfsbane and Karma? This, this sucked. This was a horrible experience. I hope nothing like this happens in 2020. Damn it, Hasbro, it's not even February. Next up is Walmart exclusive of Binary Captain Marvel. This figure took way too long to show up in stores and I just didn't care. It's basically Captain Marvel with some clear parts. Talking strictly about Loki and Corvus Glaive as a two pack, they're pretty good. Loki's a three, he's a lot of reuse, is not done anything new, but Corvus Glaive is absolute five. Amazing, plus he's the final member of the Black Order. The problem comes with Walmart. This was a set that Walmart just didn't want to sell to people. For months and months and months, we had pre-orders that were constantly getting canceled, constantly being delayed. I was getting a pending charge like once a week up to like five or six pending charges at a time for months, having hundreds of dollars locked up in my account, waiting for this two pack to release only for Walmart to cancel the order. Uh, this was a very frustrating experience. I still never saw this in stores at all, but I was able to order it off walmart.com when it was listed as in stock. I'm never preparing from Walmart again because this set showed me that they don't know what they're doing. The next Walmart exclusive is Worthy Captain America from Avengers Endgame. Absolutely amazing figure. Best MCU cap that Hasbro's ever done. No questions asked. The only real question is, why was it a Walmart exclusive? We may never know, but Walmart did do a good job at producing a lot of these and getting a lot of these out to stores and online by the end of the year, so I have to give them credit there. Absolutely incredible figure, 5 out of 5. The next Walmart exclusive is another Captain America, this being the Marvel 80 Years Alex Ross Captain America. And just like with Iron Man and Thor, this is the cap I've wanted. This is the look I've wanted. That is a cool effect piece that I don't ever use because it's really kind of clumsy, but this is the cap I wanted, 5 out of 5. Convention exclusives included a Incredible Hulk Modern, which I wasn't a big fan of, uh, and a Grandmaster and Collector 2-pack, which I didn't really care too much about. And then we also had a Marvel Unlimited Terror Deadpool. And that rounds out Marvel Legends of 2019. So real quick, here's a top 15 in no particular order. Uh, it, you can see it's predominantly X-Men. Um, Beta Ray Bill, Hulk, Spider-Woman, Iron Man, Hercules, Captain America, Thor, Mr. Sinister, Professor X, Colossus, Storm, Jean Grey, Dazzler, Deadpool, Nightcrawler. That's my top 15. Argue in the comments all you'd like. So to wrap up this video, let's take a quick look at the collection of Marvel Legends. Uh, I've been collecting this line for seven years now, and I'm pretty happy with a lot of the way the collection looks. Up top, we of course have our cosmic shelf, this is the Guardians of the Galaxy, this is Thanos and his forces. I've decided the Black Order should just be here. They're MCU figures, but they look good enough with Thanos that I don't think we're gonna get them any other way. Um, so, you know, it's kind of one of those things. I've been collecting this line for a long time and I feel like, you know, that's like the Guardians I wanted. That's like Thanos, that's Nova Corps stuff. I'm pretty good there. Fantastic Four. Um, aside from the fact this Doom does not stay here because of something else that happened in 2020. Um, this is pretty, I love this, this set right here. I don't know that none of these came out this year, but I just love the way they look. I love the way they look at the Silver Surfer and that Namor. And we could use a new Mole Man, but, you know, some of their other allies over here, kind of fun stuff. Um, you know, X-Men-wise, they pumped out a lot this year. 
to the point where things are just kind of crazy. You got new mutants mixing up with modern stuff. I'm not exactly sure how to display all of them because there's just so many versions of so many characters. Um, some of these figures like Blob are super duper old. Um, you know, you got that kind of going on. Down here, it's a little bit more straightforward. Uh, this is where the X-Factor is building. So we got Multiple Man, Havoc, and Polaris. Once we get uh, Strong Guy, I'm gonna move Quicksilver over here. Um, and then there's like the X Uncanny X-Force. Uh, start like using packaging pieces to kind of display this. Gold team was complete this year, which was really nice to see. So was the blue team complete this year. So I'm really happy to see that. And the 90s X-Force is coming along. Uh, Domino uh, doesn't really fit the starting lineup, but she does kind of fit in. I think pretty much at this point it's Feral. Uh, Feral and uh, Sunspot and Warpath, I think are the other three. So I might have to get a wider shelf for these. These may not all fit here. Uh, moving on down, Alpha Flight. I'm pretty happy with this. Sure, there's other members they could make, but this is a pretty good setup. Um, here's kind of the 80s X-Men characters, which I, I really do like a lot of looks of these. These are just different people, you know, Hope and Cable kind of hanging out there. Blink is just there because I don't have any other Age of Apocalypse people, and her team doesn't have any other members. This is just a shelf for Wolverines and Deadpools. That's where Gwenpool's hanging out this year. We'll see where she is later. Uh, let's see, Spider-Verse. So we got the Spider-Women. The Spider Girls and the Spider Women are at their shelf. This is the alternate universe Spider Men. And then we have the Peter Parker Spider Men with uh, you know, Prowler hanging out there because he just had nowhere else to go. Uh, symbiotes, I kind of mirrored the black suit versus the symbiote. These are the black Venom symbiotes, um, even down to you know, pork grind and such. And down here, it's the other symbiotes Carnage and Friends. Red Goblin looks really nice mixed with that group. Here's some Spider-Man villains, some goblins, some pumas. It's just kind of a little bit of a mismatch. Same over here. I couldn't get Hobgoblin and Green Goblin into the same shelf. Just didn't work out because of the spacing, so I just kind of did it this way. Superior foes are kind of over here with some other guys behind. Doppelganger Hydra Man just didn't have anything else to go. Kingpin leading his little forces over here. He's pretty much kind of sticking anyone that worked for Kingpin there. And then down here we got Sinister Six. Uh, you know, there's more than six there, but it's just people that have been on the Sinister Six. Here's the Captain America villains plus Juggernaut. It's the modern one back there. More of a Hydra sort of display. Uh, increase entry is just there because I don't know where else to put them. Same, this kind of goes into like Avengers villains with Red Hulk and, you know, uh, Greg Argoyle just hanging out. I'm kind of pointing out the new figures, but it's kind of hard. Uh, this is like the Marvel Knights slash street level heroes just kind of chilling. There's a lot of them. Uh, Doctor Strange is there just because of magic. Uh, I kind of feel like. I never liked to put Doctor Strange with uh, with the Avengers as much as just, hey, he kind of hangs out with the people like Blade and Morbius who are magic-based and, you know, Ghost Rider, so that's kind of the main display. This year actually required me to start doing more shelves because there was just not enough space on that wall. Uh, so we got kind of Dark Avengers, sort of just Asgardians, other um, characters. Uh, older Hela is now my comic Hela for the time being. So it's kind of like, you know, Avengers villains and allies. This is uh, S.H.I.E.L.D., British people, and Iron Man suits. As you can see, Iron Man is back there, and then, in, you know, infamous up front. The, the British hero display looks really nice now that we've got three of the main ones. S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, uh, this is the A-Force display. Uh, this is just done to include A-Force people. Uh, so members of A-Force, some members that aren't A-Force, but just kind of hang out with them, that kind of idea. And then we have my perfect adventure shelf. I, I think, honestly, outside of maybe a giant-sized giant man, this is pretty much everyone I would like in my adventure shelf and looks that I, I do like. Um, maybe a classic Hercules, but that's a big maybe. This is just what I've always wanted. Uh, there's been so many movie Avengers figures over the years that I've never gotten the comic ones I really, really wanted, and that's what I have here. So this has been a good year for Marvel Legends. Hope you all enjoyed the video. I know it was a long one. I really appreciate all of you that watched till the end. Also, please be sure to like and subscribe to keep up with future videos. And check us out on Patreon if you're in a position to help support the channel. Also, check out graphic designer Darkclaw at Darkclaw643 on Twitter. And check out Hero Club at hero-club.com for all of your Marvel Legends news and more. Until next time, this is Sanat saying goodbye.